Hi guys. Um, so this week, on request, I am going to be doing whiskey fudge. Um, word of warning, after a couple of bites of this, your mouth does start to go a little bit numb. Um, so I wouldn't recommend that it's suitable for children. Um, however, you can substitute the whiskey element into it with a different flavouring if this is more of a family recipe. Um, okay, so let's get started. All right, my lovelies. So to make whiskey fudge, you're going to need 400 ml of double cream, 100 ml of milk, 150 grams of butter, 300 grams of golden caster sugar. I don't have any golden, so I'm just using the, the normal caster sugar for today. Uh, 300 grams of light muscovado sugar. And again, I don't have that because of the crisis. You can't get hold of it. So I've got light brown sugar as a substitute and three tablespoons of whiskey. I am pretty much guaranteeing I'm going to put more than three tablespoons of whiskey into this. Um, you can stick to the three tablespoons or you can add what you want. I always use uh, Jack Daniels Tennessee honey rather than the standard one. I just find it's quite nice. It's a lot nicer as a fudge. Um, but you can go by your own preference. If you have a particular whiskey that you really like to use, you could use that instead. Equipment you are going to need, obviously, the big pan, our sweet making staple, and uh, the thermometer, also sweet making staple. Um, again, don't worry if you don't have a thermometer because you can do like a drop test in water. I'm not a big fan of it, but at the moment, everyone's struggling to get hold of everything, so make do amend. That's what I always say. Um, you'll need a measuring jug, spoon. Uh, w the usual wooden spoons, obviously for stirring and things, uh, weighing scales and a tin lined with some greaseproof paper to store everything. Um, now the trick to sweet making is always measure out all of your ingredients first before you even think about turning your pan on. Um, in my classes I always tell people it's kind of slow, slow, slow and then ridiculously quick. Um, that's true no matter what sweets you're actually doing. So I'm just measuring out everything before I get started. So I've put 100 mils of milk in there. I'm just going to top that up to make it 400 mils of cream. I've got 300 mils of the caster sugar and the golden sugar in here, the light brown sugar and 150 grams ready rayed out. We're going to put all of that in the pan. So the only thing that's not in there is the whiskey that goes in at the end. And then we're going to do what we always do. We're going to melt it really, really slowly so the sugar doesn't catch before we turn it up to boil. Okay, so I've put the cream and the milk in. I've put the butter. And now I'm putting the sugar. It's on a nice low to medium heat just to kind of get it started and then this is pretty much the only time you should really stir is right at the beginning just to make sure everything's combined and that sugar isn't going to catch on the bottom of the pan um, and this is the best way to stop it from burning so you can move it around while you're melting the butter in but after that we're going to stop um, it's worth noting you can actually make whiskey fudge um, the quick and easy way as well. Um, so a couple of weeks ago I did a dirty Biscoff fudge because um, it's dead uh, easy. You just melt some chocolate, add some um, condensed milk and um, add your flavourings into it. This one you can do exactly the same. You just use um same amount of chocolate, same amount of condensed milk. Uh, a teaspoon of vanilla and about I don't know, three quarters of a cup of whiskey and you can mix it all together in pretty much the same way as that recipe um, which is quite useful if you you know you haven't got all the different sugars in all the creams and the butters and, and that um, this will produce a better quality fudge than that other one but if you're just going for that whiskey flavoring that'll work just as well this way of making fudge Although it takes a little bit longer than um, the condensed milk and chocolate one, um, I found it's a lot more um, 
adaptable for different flavours. So I've got some recipes for like ginger fudge, for like a salted caramel fudge, and it does it with this base cream, butter um, and sugar combination, melting it down. And it's a really good one for when you want something that doesn't have that kind of, I don't know, the chocolatey, chocolatey aftertaste to bind it together. Um, especially for stuff that doesn't usually go with it. So if you're doing like coffee flavoured and all that kind of stuff. So whenever you're at the point where we add the alcohol later, and you don't have to use whiskey. If you prefer brandy or rum, you can you can use that. But if you, you want some of that's non-alcoholic, that's when you'd put your flavourings in. So you could put like um, stem ginger, pour in the ginger, uh, the ginger juice from the, the stem ginger, chop up the ginger and chuck that into it as well. And you get a really delicious fudge that's very very strong in ginger um and the same can be said for anything else you could do it for cherries all that kind of stuff and it really does take on the flavors quite nicely okay as you can see it's melted everything down now and it's gone this absolutely lovely golden color can you see that and i've turned the heat up Uh, I'm going to start melting that down. Now, we're trying for the firm ball stage, which is 118 degrees to 121 degrees. Once we reach that, we're going to take it off the heat and let it reduce a little bit. Um, but you have you have only got that three, deg three degree kind of space. So you really do have to keep an eye on your thermometer to make sure it doesn't go over. As we've done on other videos, if you want to try and keep it um, as smooth as possible without the graininess, if you get a small jar of, small glass of cold water and a pastry brush and just go around the edges so that you don't get, as it rises and it boils, you don't get any of the undissolved sugar into your fudge um, and it just ends up giving you a much smoother finish. It's worth noting that sweet making takes quite a long time um, and I tend to skip forward in these videos because um, there is a lot of waiting around that's needed and patience. Um, for example, I'm up to 110 degrees now and I've been boiling this for about 10 minutes um, and I'm still 8 degrees off what I need to be. So don't ever think that... Um, it's not working or you know I'm not doing this right if you've been studying for quite a while that is just the nature of sweet making so once your fudge has reached 118 or 119 degrees you want to turn off the heat and we're going to turn it off and we're going to let it cool to 110 degrees before we add our flavouring I'm just going to take that off the hot hob so it'll cool down quicker. Um, and then as soon as it hits 110 degrees, we're going to add the whiskey in and beat it until it stops looking shiny. So once it's reached 110 degrees, you're going to put three tablespoons of whiskey in. One, two, three. And then we're going to mix it in. You can see how it all sizzles up, which is why you let it cool. And then you're just going to bind it and beat it until it stops looking silky. It's really important to take it off the heat and let it cool down because if you did this when it was at that 120, 118, 119 degrees and you had the whiskey, it would literally just go up. So you have to leave it time to cool. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but as you're whipping it, you can see how it's thickening up. And what you want to do is try and get it as thick as possible without that shine before you transfer it into your pan. Okay, so... This is now looking really matte. You see it's kind of creamy. You see, so there's less of that shine of when you first added the whiskey and it's gone really thick. So you know that it's gonna to start to pour. Uh, once you're happy that it's as thick as you're gonna get it, you're gonna 
it into your tea, your pre-prepared, and then you're going to let it set for three hours, just at room temperature, not in the fridge. Just put it on one side, and then after a couple of hours, once it's firmed up, we're going to slice it so that we can put it out in portions. Okay, so uh, that's it. That's everything for whiskey fudge. I'm just waiting for it to set now. Um, so as soon as that's set and I've portioned it out, I'll add those pictures onto the website. But I hope you enjoyed the recipe. Have a go yourself. It is absolutely delicious and I, I couldn't recommend it highly enough. Um, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next week.